system, and it's played by gentlemen pulling together all right, towards a common goal rather than some guy having his own brand and throwing the team under the bus. And, you know, and that, so Antonio Brown's, you know, my, one of my all-pro knuckleheads. He's up there with Tunsil and a couple other people. You just wonder, like, what are you thinking, sir? Where's your respect, number one, for right. the team, for the National Football League, and then most importantly, yourself? Right. All right. Um, so, you know, I think I made my point. I love this Wyoming quarterback, Josh Allen, uh, you know, from tweets that were racially insensitive, uh, insensitive, you know, for you know a couple of years earlier when he was in high school. Right. You know, Stephen A. bailed him out, you know, because Stephen A. Uh, went and interviewed him, and he was so apologetic. But that was just the politics. He wasn't, he, you know, he might have been the first quarterback selected. He went to the third because of that. So, you know, you, you kind of see that, you know, we're just getting to the point now where uh, this pendulum's got to swing back to the middle. We could talk about this all day long. I've got a list of another 10 or 15 guys that we go through, but I don't want to bore our audience. I think we've made our point. Well, I think the one thing that you <laughs> mentioned, the one thing you mentioned before, okay, and I want to make sure we bring this thing, that in the ESPN article, uh, you talk about over 50 to 60 people, famous, released, fined, Fired, reprimanded. I mean, we got the drill where this theme is going. Now, you brought something up I want to ask you about, okay, about Michael Sam, okay? First of all, okay, some of those tweets were directed toward him, but I've got to ask you, being a former NFL player, Bill, you know, I know what he was trying to do, admit that he was gay, okay, be one of the first open uh, gay people to talk about it. But don't you think that if he really wanted to play football, that he would have been better, better off just kind of keeping his mouth shut and talked about it afterwards, realizing that this is such a pre- prejudice type society? Because he did it and rolled the dice and it bit him. And, it, and of course, when he had a chance to resurrect his career in Canada, he never got around, did that either. But I think that's one of those things, if you really worry about a football career, and you know it's a sensitive social subject where you can be attacked, Okay, that it might have been something he should have kept quiet about and talked about later on after he played by being judged by his play, not by his uh, sexual preference. Well, you know, uh, I'll tell you what I think, all right? Okay. First of all, when I saw him, he was a tweener. And what I mean by that, not big enough to play defensive end, not good enough to play linebacker. Right. Lots of guys like that. So he's a great college player, but it doesn't translate to the pros. This is why I have a real issue sometimes with some of these guys putting their cart before the horse. Right. Okay. All right, now, I, I have no problem with you coming out. That's all fine and good. If he's my teammate, okay, if I, I would support you one way or the other because I flat out don't care. Right. I, all I care is about your performance. Right. And it becomes a distraction. So on one hand, uh, you know, it was a distraction to the ball club, but I don't think it would have become a distraction uh, and been a bigger deal if the kid had wind up being a, a really good player. Okay. would have gone away. All right, and I think this guy thought a little bit too much of himself. Left the Rams in, a, in an awkward situation. You could see politically they were just, you know, if I'm a general manager and we just can't cut this guy, there's going to be a backlash here. Right. All right, and you know, it, it just you get to a point where you know you're happy for the kid, uh, but this is the type of stuff that you, you know, I, I don't care whether it's social media, whether it's taking a knee, whether it's uh, you know your sexual preference. Well, it just keep the politics and the social issues out of the game. Right. You can't win one way or the other. Right. And I just think that the, because of the amount of money these guys are making and the amount of attention they're getting, it goes to their head where they feel that this is my opportunity to make a name for myself. And that's where we people cross the line. Right. right? And that's what's, what's happening out there, and it's getting even more ridiculous. Okay, this is not politics. This is pro football. All right, let's just keep it at that. We don't need to hear about your opinions, insulating on Twitter. If I was a coach, I'd basically say, hey, I don't want to hear anything about social media. All All right, right. Stuff enough to win in this league without dealing with extra stuff that's manufactured artificially. All right? Yeah. So, you know, as far as Michael Sam's concerned, uh, you know, I'm proud that he came out. Uh, you know, I, uh, you know, it, it is. You know, he made his point, uh, but I, I probably would have done the opposite. 
I would have just kept my mouth shut, made a name for myself in the league, and then then come out. Yeah, I would have too. Effective. Yeah, I would have too. Deep down, I think deep down he possibly realized he wasn't going to make it. This right. is his opportunity, all right? Because you're looking at a life after football, and you worked your entire life. And like I said before, you know the Brandies is going to be an advocate for uh, the gays. All right, well that's great. You know, I'm sure he's doing real well. All right, so uh, you know that's what I'm talking about. Uh, you just no one knows for sure. It sort of reminds me of uh, uh, the women in the uh, you know in the in the Astros game, you know, flashing themselves and then turning around and going, uh, you know, uh, uh, breast awareness. Right. You know, so you, you don't know. All right, but you know, I'm going to give him a break. You know, I, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm proud of him that he came out. I just think the timing was bad. Right. It would have been better if he just balled up and, and turned into be a really good player. It didn't cause a lot of attention to himself and his team uh, when he originally came in and, went, and should have waited. But, you know, you never know. So, you know, that's just another argument uh, for another day about, uh, you know, social issues. But I just think it strengthens our issues about uh, not bringing this stuff up at all, no matter what it is. Right. No, I'm okay. with you. I'm with you 100%. I'll, 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 I'll make a point to you right now. I was talking to my contacts. That, you know, ratings of the NBA are really down. Really down. And I asked him, I said, why? Because people are really getting tired of LeBron James. And I love LeBron. I'm a diehard Laker fan. Right. I watch the games all the time. But the guys sitting there telling me the ratings are really, really down. Uh, the, uh, 17, I think, of the 21 MLS teams, attendance is down and down and down. All right. So what's happening is the, uh, the American public now is starting to understand look, we want to be entertained. We want an escape from social issues. Right. Uh, we want someone to see flat, flat out ball. And you're sitting there and you're watching a game that's slowed down by flags because of technology. And then you have players taking knees. And you have players doing this and you have players doing that. It's too much. Right. And I, I see you're going, well, you know, what's going on with the NBA? Well, LeBron, uh, you know, didn't, you know, support it. Colin Kaepernick when he took a knee. I, LeBron, we all support Colin Kaepernick. It was just the wrong time to do it. Right. The wrong platform. Okay? Well, you're the king. You know, people follow you. All right? But, you know, you can't be, you know, some of this stuff is, 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 is crossing the line and ruining the sports for everyone. Right. They're supporting China, okay, over the United States. You know, that was, that was something like, okay, that, it, it's kind of ticked some people off. Oh, yeah. You know, and I understand this stuff. Trust me when I tell you. All right? But at the same time, it's how it's presented, how you bring it across. All right? And you also have a media now that's hyped with political agendas. And, of course, you're always going to have people that are going to run with stuff and make it bigger than it is. Right. So I just think that, you know, this thing will self-correct, uh, you know, and over time it'll go away. But we got to tone it down a little bit. Well, what uh, you know, we have the same thing with corporate America and these commercials with these guys that are rookies that haven't done anything yet, and they're acting like they're Peyton Manning and you know Aaron Rodgers and all this other stuff. And it's not fair. Well, one of the reasons, Bill, I got turned off by the NBA. To be honest with you, is uh, I named it the NDL, the National Drama League. I'm sick and tired of hearing it. I am play basketball already. Nobody really cares. What you think, whether it's coaches spouting off, whether it's Popovich, Van Gundy, or Kerr, just play basketball. We don't want to hear who's going to be a free agent a year from now. Who the heck cotton picking cares? Nobody cares, okay? And, you know, and all these guys that continue to uh, talk, yeah, to me, I, I'm just so fed up with it. Hockey players aren't that bad when it comes to social media. They don't get paid as much, but they play hard. You know, baseball, I don't think it's as bad. The NBA is horrible. And the NFL, unfortunately, you have a lot of bad eggs. They can't keep their mouth shut. Just let your play speak for itself. And to me, the NBA has turned me off to a point where I really don't care if I watch many games. You know how many games, Bill, I've seen NBA games in the last few years? I think maybe one. And that was down in Miami when Dwayne Wade played the Pistons for the last time. Other than that, I, not, not that I really care to go to Miami to see basketball down there because the Heat have a heck of a following there, and they're, one, they're the best franchise in southern Florida, without a doubt. But I am so sick and tired of all of the drama 
that that league has. I really am tired of it. I used to like the way old school basketball played with the bad boys where it was physical and uh, instead of a jump shooting league, but that's for another day. But the reality is they need to, as they would say on Mike and Mike, Golik and Wingo, just shut up. Really? Just shut up. Uh, see, I know you watch these programs, huh, Bill? Okay. Just shut up. I love the NBA. Uh, I, but I just think that they're too far out in left field right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, with the social media and the politics. And, right. uh, you know, right now they need to chill out a little bit because of Moy's tweet, which was another, uh, you know, just ridiculously ignorant move. Uh, but the reality of this, you have that undercurrent of big money. Right. Okay, and a lot of people think that, you know, LeBron, you know, doesn't like the United States and is willing to support China and communism over, uh, you know, America. So you can't win when you get into these environments, even though all of these men have the best of intentions. You know what I mean? But, you know, you, you just, you know, like, you feel bad for guys like Colin Kaepernick who probably deserve an opportunity, and they're not going to get one because they affected the bottom line so much. Right. All right. Uh, you know, Antonio Bryant might get picked up uh, down the stretch, uh, but it's going to cost them a ton of money. Right. You know, and you feel for a young man like that. You, you know, you say, look, you know, he'd be, you know, you're a great player, but, you know, draw attention to yourself. And there's a dynamic out there right now called the American public that you may not understand, doesn't understand where you're at because you're not a player. Now, as a player, I understand this totally. I mean, there's a big thing tonight about Kawhi, or, Kawhi Leonard load managing. And I'll tell you what my theory is on that, okay? okay. Uh, Kawhi never says anything. And I love that because she, nobody nobody knows. Right. So how can you argue with someone who never really talks? Right, okay? that's true. He leads by example. All right, now, he was hurt last year. He missed, I believe, uh, last year he missed 22 games with the Raptors. Why he was coming off an injury like season the year before with San Antonio. Right. Okay, the Clippers have 13 back-to-backs. Right. All right, they're going to sit them out for some of these games. Why? Uh, we all know it's about, you know, making the playoffs, okay, and, and, and uh, having your guys rested for the game. But, it, you know, uh, one of Doris Burke, who I just, you know, really love, along with Stephen A. and a lot of other, Michael Wilbon, all these guys, they were all talking tonight about how, it, it you know, it kind of jives the, the American public and the fan who sits in the seats and wants to see, you know, him play against the, the Buccaneers, right. against the Bucks tonight, and they're sitting them out. Now, on one hand, you know, we understand, uh, you know, what it takes to win an NBA championship. Hell, you know, the reason the Clippers traded for him and they, you know, they got the rapper's philosophy of load management. But then you also have entertainment. Right. But I personally think he's still hurt because when he was playing – Last year in the Raptors, he was really, really tired. And you can kind of see the body language a little bit. Like that leg is not totally healed. Right. All right. And, you, you know, you get to a point where, you know, you've got to, you know, you you know, on one hand, if our management, I got to say nuts to what the American public is saying and the NBA is saying, okay, and there's really no answer to it right now because even if they find him for doing that, all right, uh, the, the, the Clippers are just going to pay the fine. So Doris Burke made a point, and I'm making a point as well, that we've got some issues that are long-term problems. Okay, in the NBA, in Major League Baseball, in uh, the National Football League, in hockey, in the Olympics. Okay, we've got a tool that some people just don't know how to use, right? called social media. It doesn't right. matter whether it's Facebook or Twitter. And I would just say, look, if you're going to touch just be positive. You can't get in trouble saying things with love and kindness. True. Okay? So it's the same same thing we were taught when we were a child, except now you have an accelerator there. <laughs> All right? So you got to be even more smart to make sure that you understand that now you're even more of a public figure because when we played, nobody really cared. We had a $2 million payroll. Right. Okay, guys were really great players and playing for $100,000. It didn't matter whether you were a second baseman for the Oakland A's, right. winning world championships. Hell, I sat and talked to a couple of guys the other day that are some of the best NFL players, okay, that ever were. I was shocked at what they made. I also found out 
what uh, some of the guys that are legendary players have been playing for. Okay, and this is something I don't talk about 